This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 126. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week. How oh, could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, Games Workshop has brought back an oldie but a goldie, and another oldie that might not be so goldie, and I lost another game of Warhammer 40,000. But first, are you ready to dive into designing your very own website, but you don't know where to start? Well, then today's sponsor, Squarespace, is here to help. Squarespace is the all-in-one website builder and hoster. They make it fun and easy to start creating and designing your very own professional-looking website with simple-to-use features and great support from beginning to end. You can get started by looking through and picking one of the many templates on offer, but you can easily create your own using the next-gen Fluid Engine Designer. The designer lets you drag and drop to create the specific website that you envision. Every detail is customizable to fit your website needs. Squarespace also provides a fast solution to creating custom merch, whether your products are physical, digital, or service-based. Now, selling your merch is easier than ever with Squarespace. Take advantage of the free trial offered by Squarespace, and when you feel ready to launch your website, you can use our link below or go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. First, let's get to the good stuff. Space Marine Vanguard Task Force is back. I was wondering what they were going to do with this, because this box came out, and it was was and is the only way to get suppressor Space Marines. Presumably one day they'll give suppressors their own box, but it appears like it is not this day. The Space Marine Vanguard Task Force came out to show off a whole bunch of the new Phobo style armor, like the sneakier infiltratory Raven Guardy Space Marines. And it was a banger when it first came out and then it got re-released, and then it got repackaged as the Space Marine Combat Patrol, and then it quietly left because it was probably too good to be a Combat Patrol. Like, some of these units hit really, really hard, and I assumed it was gone for good, but apparently Games Workshop, instead of reboxing one single box of three guys, are just going to keep this little bundle available for a little while longer. This box is pretty snazzy. I really like it because I was able to get suppressors off of eBay really, really cheap because this box was pretty darn cheap. And hopefully it remains pretty cheap because they're re-releasing it probably means there's going to be some sort of a price high, price rise, but uh, I'm still hopeful. A lot of these units are really good. I just bought some Eliminators. Oh, I just bought some Eliminators and I am un able to pick the loadout. Last fusels seem really good, but not necessarily strong enough to take out vehicles, but definitely good enough to like lay down some serious hurt on some tougher infantry terminator equivalents. But then I also really want the precision so shots on the bolt sniper rifles. But then there's also the sneaky rule where if I give my sergeant kind of a worse gun, just like a little bit of a better bolter, all of a sudden they can move, shoot, move and move, shoot, move is really powerful. I have no idea what weapon loadout to give them. Like, oh, it's hard, it's really hard. I think I'm gonna go with Laz Fusils because they look the coolest, but ah, oh, Eliminators. Eliminators are seem really, really cool. And Infiltrators are excellent. They didn't always used to be, they are always better than Reavers, but everything is kind of better than Reavers. Even Tax Squad is better than Reavers just because they're cheaper. But the Infiltrators are really, really good. They create bubbles of deep striking and reinforcement denial, which is really, really powerful, especially for a low model count army like Space Marines, where you just don't have as much board presence as like pretty much any other army. So having these 24 inch bubbles of you can't put your models here is fantastic. Now this kit only lets you build infiltrators, but there's definitely something to be said for infiltrators slash incursors. Incursors also have an ability with their bolters. Their bolters aren't particularly good, but if you shoot at something, you've tagged that thing and now everything else in your army is better at shooting that one thing. Really, really powerful ability. Like even if you're not gonna do any damage, like you're like, oh, I'm just gonna shoot at this Lehman Russ. And you know, you're, all of your bolter shots are just gonna bounce off, but now everything else is shooting that Lehman Russ a little bit better for just like a little 90.5 man squad, it's really, really good. But infiltrators are also very good. And of course, the Lieutenant in Phobos armor, really, really nice little unit. I like him, I'm still gonna say I like him better than the Indomitus guy, or the Leviathan guy with his double knives. Um, lone operative is a very good rule, and I think that that guy definitely has some juice. But for the exact same points, I'm just gonna take a Vindicar Assassin, because Vindicar Assassin is 
Just a little bit better. Just a little bit better than a dude with two knives. I'm glad this box is back because I actually have had one in my shopping cart on eBay for a while now, but the price has been going up and up because it was discontinued, but now it's no longer discontinued. So hopefully that price drops back down and I can get some more suppressors which aren't the most phenomenal unit, but they're kind of cool. I do like the look of them. In the Games Workshop pro, like production photos, the guns look absolutely dumb, but in person, they actually look pretty cool. I really like them. And speaking of other things that are pretty cool, the Arvis lighter is back. This little bumblebee spaceship, it was available on Forge World forever, but it probably was never really worth Forge World prices because it is kind of just a brick. It's a it's a rhino with wings and it's coming back in plastic. And if it comes back for the right price, I could see it being kind of worthwhile, maybe as a fun piece of terrain that you can write very specific rules for. I think it would look really good next to a whole bunch of like agents of the Imperium or Inquisitors. It's kind of a neat little ship. It has a very, very, very Star Wars look to it. It reminds me a lot of the um, from Star Wars Episode 7, the quad jumper that explodes at the beginning of the movie. Spoiler alert for this tiny little throwaway gag. But it's it is kind of a neat little spaceship, and I really hope it is very cheap. Because on Forge World, it was expensive. It was really expensive for kind of a garbage little airplane. Although, even though it is a garbage little airplane, actually it's an airplane that looks a little bit like a garbage can, but it's the it's the uh, the right form factor for a game. Like some flyers in 40k, especially like the Valkyrie and Vendetta from the Imperial Guard, those things are monstrously big, and it's really hard to actually fit them on the board and not have them bump into terrain or just bump into everything. This thing, even though it's a little bit on the silly side in terms of proportions, it actually does fit really well in terms of the game. It's just a little brick, a little brick that you move around the board. So for that reason, I kind of dig it. It'll be interesting to see what kind of rules it has. Currently it has none. It didn't make the jump from 9th edition to the indexes. Not even the Legends of the Legends of the Heresy index, but it's, it's a neat little plane. It'll be interesting to see what kind of rules it has, if it will have something for like an Agents of the Imperium, which currently aren't their own faction, which is probably fine. They've never really been their own faction. And now that they can just be brought as an upgrade for all the other Imperial factions, I think that's probably a better a better place for them. But it would be interesting to see if this thing gets slipped into Agents of the Imperium, because you can bring like one in Incursion, one in uh, like you can bring one, one, two or three, depending on what size of Warhammer 40,000 game you're playing. It'll be interesting to see if you can just bring one really cheap airplane into your army. That actually could be reasonably powerful and reasonably interesting. Also, I think we're all waiting for the Exaction Squad, the Adeptus Arbides Squad to get nerfed because 35 points for those guys is way, way too cheap. And it seems like every super competitive list for Imperium is bringing the Exaction Squad. So it'll be interesting to see, but I like this little plane. It's a neat little guy. Man, would it look good in Star Wars. I can, I could just see it. I can just see it in the background of almost any shot, like on Tatooine, one of these guys just sitting there. It's a neat little plane. Also, Games Workshop, like, what are you doing? It's This article has one picture. Like, it seems like Games Workshop has forgot how to shill, but I haven't. Shop at Valhalla Hobby for all your miniature wargaming needs. They have great stuff and great prices, and if you use our code EOB23, you can get just a little bit more off. Now, the Arvis Lighter coming back, is it's a neat little spaceship, but one thing that left Forge World, actually, I think exactly a decade ago in 2013, a little spaceship that that nobody remembers, but everybody remembers. And that is the Aquila Lander. The Aquila Lander is the wonkiest little spaceship that ever came out of Warhammer 40,000. And it's it never really became popular, but everybody knows it from the Battle for McCrag starter sets because there was a crashed one. Like all of those pieces actually were a real spaceship that was sold by Forge World. And the really cool thing with this spaceship is it had like bird flappy wings. Like nobody ever posed it that way, but it did have these segmented wings that had hinges to flap. And then the ends of the wings were essentially feathers. It was a ship shaped like an Aquila. It's a really, really cool little spaceship. And I, if Forge World is bringing back the little, the little Arvis lighter, they should definitely bring back the Aquila lander. That thing was sick. It reminds me a lot, once again, of Star Wars. 
of the uh, the Emperor Palpatine's ship, his little shuttle with the wings that fold up. The Aquila Lander wings fold up in exactly the same way because Games Workshop loves to steal from other universes. And I would love an Aquila Lander. I've seen a couple of them out in the wild. I know Arbiter Ian has one. I always see it behind him in his like little case. Oh, I'm so jealous of it. It's a really, really cool spaceship. So if Forge World is going to bring more stuff back and more stuff back that doesn't really matter, like those little, those little lander guy, bring back the Aquila Lander. It was so cool. Oh, I would put in the magnet so that I can have the wings actually flap and move a little bit. Love that ship. If anybody remembers it, leave a comment. It was a really, really cool spaceship. But speaking of things that were really, really cool this week, I played a bunch of Warhammer 40k. I actually played my first game of Combat Patrol, a classic battle of Leviathan, Space Marines versus Tyranids. I lost at 50 points to 15. It might have been 55 points to 15, but uh, it felt really good. We played on the appropriate map size. We played on a three by four and it was it was really good. Some of the rules, like reading through the data sheets, they actually did change the data sheets just a little bit, often taking away special rules to help make things a little bit more balanced. And it felt really good. Like my leader got into a battle with the psychophage and they were just slapping each other, taking wounds off. The Terminators felt absolutely unstoppable. The Tyranids were swarming across the board with tons and tons of great movement on everything. Ah, oh, my favorite moment from the game was I had two little Infernus Marines battling the Tyranid Prime. And they were just, these two guys in the Tyranid Prime were just sitting there for like two turns, just slapping back and forth and doing nothing to each other. And in my mind, it was this furious battle of dodging and weaving and the Tyranid stabbing with his big talons. It was a lot of fun. I definitely want to play a lot more Combat Patrol. And I do want to try out some of the other Combat Patrols for armies that I've never actually gotten to play with or against in Warhammer 40k, because it's actually Decently easy to paint up a combat patrol. A whole army, it's a project. But a combat patrol, that's, you know, a couple of weeks of work. Definitely, definitely doable. But I played a real game of Warhammer 40,002. It's not really a, like, combat patrol is a real game, but I just mean like a proper, big, classic game of Warhammer 40,000. I guess it wasn't that big because it was a thousand points. But once again, my Black Templar went up against Sean's parking lot guard. And I played my little heart out. I made it all the way to turn four before I was tabled, and the final score was 30 points to 55, and that's so much better than I've ever done. I was actually, I got, I was getting off my secondaries every single turn. I was actually getting some primaries done. It just, ah, it just wasn't enough. The parking lot guard, the Lehman Russ specifically, was just rolling up the board. My blast cannons and power fists were just literally bouncing off the side of it, which it's, it's kind of sad that all the anti-tank stuff isn't really that good at killing tanks anymore. I also feel like I had some very below average rolls because in turn in my turn one, all four of my last cannons and all four of my power fists all whiffed against the Lehman Russ. It should have at least half of them should have hit, but all of it bounced off. But ah, oh, it did feel good to actually be doing stuff in the game because previously I've been getting like table turn two, but like actually moving things over the board, getting my secondaries, capturing objectives, almost managing to kill stuff. By the end of the game, I hadn't managed to kill a single Imperial Guard unit and he managed to kill every single one of my models, but it finally made me break down. I went to the local game store and I became part of the problem. I also bought one of the big indestructible tanks, the Primaris Repulsor. I've kind of been ignoring the Space Marine vehicles just because I'm not a big vehicle person. My list was just a sea of Space Marines. I'm a Black Templar player. All of my special rules really benefit like infantry, battle line, and things carrying close combat weapons. So vehicles just don't really feel right in my list. It feels like I'm not getting the most out of my army when I bring them. It does seem like now that vehicles have been given a huge boost in survivability and damage ability, it does feel like there's a new element of the game and it's big indestructible tanks. And if one person brings a big indestructible tank, it kind of forces you to also bring a big indestructible tank or else you're just gonna lose. I do think that there's ways to fix this. like. I feel like the guns that specifically are for killing vehicles, maybe give them anti-vehicle three up. I feel like that would just be a nice, simple way to give those weapons back some of their lethality without making them just kill 
everything in the game because it's only against vehicles that they have the really good wounding and everything else you just do the standard uh, toughness versus strength like math equation but i would like to see like melters my melters i love melters these little volcano guns that are supposed to shoot holes in everything can't hit a tank rolling on fives and sixes and if i have to make a five or six up roll it's not gonna happen I don't know who I've offended in a previous life, but man, I can't roll dice to save my life. So I got a big indestructible tank and I actually need your guys' help because I'm not overly enthusiastic about the, the space, really any space marine tank. I just like foot sloggers, but I can get into a vehicle if I make it a fun challenge for myself. And so I've kind of got these two ideas of how I'm gonna tackle this tank. I had a lot of fun in the past painting a, a Space Marine Land Raider without the airbrush. What do I do? What like it, it was a really fun challenge. And so I could paint this guy up without the airbrush. But I also bought one of those incredibly cheap $20 airbrush with the tankless compressor. And that could also be a fun challenge. Is this little $20 single action junky airbrush up to the task of painting a Space Marine tank? So. Which, which of those ideas do you guys find more interesting that you'd be more excited to watch? Because I could go either way. But yeah, I definitely need to get this tank painted up and get it against Sean, because I just, I can't lose every single time. And it's not even just about losing, but getting stomped every single time. I want to kill at least one guard unit. Actually, I have to kill at least two or three guard units because guard have access to the stratagem that lets them bring back a battle line unit. So like if I kill a, a sentinel, it just comes back to life. Which I feel like Sentinels should like the, the cutoff line should have been before Sentinels. <laughs> I'm fine with infantry squads coming back. I'm fine with like Atlan Rough Riders coming back. A Sentinel coming back to life feels a little much. They're not that easy to kill and they're pretty darn cheap with some like their toughness seven. Got a lot of wounds. I feel like Sentinel when maybe when that codex comes out sometime in the next three years, maybe maybe just uh. Just lower that stratagem's power level down just a little bit. It is, it's fun. It's really fun that guard squads come back to life because like this endless wave of bodies is kind of the idea of the guard and having them be able to come back to life is a really, really good way to let that happen without somebody having to be like, well, if I want to experience that fun guard thingy, I just have to tech into guard spam. Like, no, you can actually bring a reasonable number of guardsmen squads and then bring them back to life if you have the points for it. So I do like that stratagem. Sentinels are a little much. <laughs> little games are sharp. Maybe just dial it back a little bit. It's, it's all the way up at 11 now. Maybe turn it down to nine or 10. But the Repulsor Executioner is just an anything. Well, not an anything killer. It's not a Lehman Russ, but it's, it's a very, very good tank. Toughness 12, 16 wounds, three up save, heavy laser destroyer with a 72 inch range. Two shots hitting on strength 16, two shots. So, Two shots hitting on threes, which means I'm gonna roll probably a one to hit. <laughs> one hit, and then for, for my wounding roll, when I have to roll a two up, I'm gonna get a one, and then I'm gonna command point re-roll, and then it's gonna be a one again. Oh, there was this amazing moment in the game where it was like, it was right before I was about to be tabled, and Sean moved his models close to me, and I'm like, you know what? I am going to use the Overwatch stratagem with my LAS cannon. I'm gonna melt that Sentinel as my last action in this game. I roll it, it's a six. I got it off. I roll to wound, it's a one. I'm like, no, I can't be this close. Command point re-roll the wound roll, roll it again, it's a one again. Ah, oh, it was so brutally painful. Ah, oh, it was, it was, it was like a risky maneuver, but it was working out and then it didn't. Ah, oh, those those sorts of moments are really, really fun. And it would be so much fun if it wasn't what didn't always happen to me. <laughs> Oh, but it would have been cool. Just imagine in your heads how cool it would have been if that had worked out. But the Repulsor Executioner is a neat tank and I actually don't mind most of it. I like the tank part of it because it's pretty much just a land raider. Uh, the turret. The turret is like a very M1 Abrams kind of short. It's a it's a very modern looking tank and the Primaris are kind of a little bit more modern looking. Not really their armor, but all of their stuff is pretty modern. And so I don't know what I'm going to do to make it a little bit more gothic-y and a little bit more grim for my Black Templar. I have some of the bits from the Black Templar upgrade frame, so I can I can glue on like decorations, but I feel like it's it's going to need a little bit more than just decorations to make it feel grim dark. I think I still have a little bit of the um, 
Sigmarite mausoleum kicking around. Maybe I can find some of those churchy bits and glue them on. Maybe I can find some STLs online. Yeah, I definitely gotta do something to make it look a little bit more Templar-y. The Templar aren't above using really, really cool tech to murder Xenos, but I want it to look the part. I want it to look like the old 5th edition Codex cover where you've just got like literally these like drooling, snarling zealots sprinting across the field, every single one in slightly mismatched, not like not quite the same armor. And so I definitely want that look. Ooh, there was a, there, in the middle of that photo, there's a, they're carrying like a sarcophagus. Maybe I can figure out a sarcophagus to go on the turret and that can make it a little bit more churchy. I'm definitely gonna, definitely gonna have to find something. Giant flag, a giant flag would be lovely. Oh, speaking of lovely, one thing I noticed on the Games Workshop box art, the antenna's a little bit bent. That's just a fun little detail. They also are bad at carrying their models around and keeping them nice. I mean, I'm probably gonna snap them off because I am not careful at all. But it's fun that even Games Workshop, even Games Workshop can't keep their stuff absolutely perfect. But you know what is absolutely perfect? That's right, the terrain available over on our Patreon. This month, we have the Corpse Starch Factory, an entire battlefield that is producing food for humans from humans. We also make extra episodes of Eons of Battle, and we have a tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines, and you can join the Crusade. It's been a very fun week of wargaming. I got a few more games in than I usually do. We also played a great game of Go Fish. And also, please leave a comment if you know how best to equip the Eliminators, the Laz Fusels, or the Bolt Carbines, or the Sergeant with the Bolter. Like, which one is the optimal loadout? I'm still not sure, but I would love your guys' opinion. Thanks for watching.